So Stephen Amell is a rare example of an actor who is as cool as the superhero he portrays on TV. He's gotten into this awesome shape so he's been able to do these iconic workout scenes involving things like the salmon ladder, upside down sit-ups, rope climbing. So this led a lot of viewers to ask me if I could do a video on this channel looking at how Stephen Amell trains and how Arrow trains. And the good news is that as I researched it, it turns out there's a lot to talk about here. And I thought it'd be also cool to look at how Arrow himself might train to develop his kind of accuracy and his master archer skills. So without further ado, let's get into it. So like I said, Arrow is kind of synonymous with those awesome bodyweight moves like the salmon ladder where you're climbing a ladder using a rung that kind of slots into place and you're just exploding up with your body strength. It looks awesome and it's actually quite a functional display of strength. So in order to get that kind of strength and explosiveness, Stephen Amell used mostly bodyweight training, calisthenics. He did a range of pull-up variations, planking, balance exercises, press-ups, etc. And he told Men's Fitness in an interview that he much more respects someone who can do 30 pull-ups versus someone who can bench press 300 pounds because he thinks there's just a lot more real-world use, whereas the bench press is kind of more for show. You know, the most impressive things that I can do on the show are when I can manipulate my own body weight. And that, that, that really is the true test of, of strength. I'm much more impressed if someone can do 30 pull-ups than bench 300 pounds. Um, because one has, has an actual application in the real world, theoretically. The other is just for show. And the great thing about this is that when you're doing bodyweight exercises like that, you're involving your core a lot. You have to stabilize yourself, balance, and press-ups, like I've said, are a great way to flatten your stomach and your abs as are pull-ups and those upside down twisting pull-ups will train the obliques and the lower abs. It's a great way to really develop that kind of toned physique that Steven's got in the show. And he also combined this with a diet where he avoided gluten, processed sugars and dairy. Not because he thought there was anything evil about dairy or gluten, but just because that was a good way of him structuring his diet so that he could avoid eating those things that he didn't want in order to keep his calories low, in order to stabilize his blood sugar. So if you combine these calisthenics with a low sugar diet and presumably a relatively low calorie diet, running, which he also said he did, and lots of martial arts training and parkour, which we know he does, then you have a recipe for lean and that explains why he looks the way he does. If you wanna to train to do that kind of move though, you're gonna to need to use progressions. You can't just go straight up to a salmon ladder and start ascending. And likewise, I wouldn't recommend that you hang upside down from your legs until you're pretty confident in your strength and your ability to climb back down. So progressions in bodyweight training mean basically you're training with an easier bodyweight exercise to start with and you're building up to something more difficult. So that might mean that you're doing assisted pull-ups to begin with. It might mean that you then do regular pull-ups. might mean that you try and do as many as you can. Then you can start being explosive, doing clapping pull-ups, and then you're ready to try the salmon ladder. And that's true of all kinds of exercises. If you wanna be able to do the planche, then you need to first train with the plank and then you can use the Maltese push-up where you're changing the angle of your hand slightly. So you're basically building up to what you need to do. Sounds obvious, but a lot of people think that calisthenics just means doing endless push-ups and endless sit-ups. It's also important if you're going to do calisthenics as your main form of exercise that you make it challenging enough. And a great way to do that is with mechanical drop sets. So here you reverse the order and you start with the harder exercise. And then when you can do no more, you drop down to the lower one. So you might do as many clapping press-ups as you can. Then you do regular press-ups, then you do press-ups on your knees. It's a great way to really feel the burn and you can get a full workout with calisthenics that way. So another reason that Stephen Amell says he trained this way is because it's more similar to how Oliver Queen might have trained himself. So if you know the story, Oliver Queen gets stranded on an island, he has to fend for himself for five years and that's how he develops the speed and the skill and the strength that allows him to become Arrow. And if you really were training on an island, you wouldn't be doing curls and things, you'd be doing pull-ups from tree branches, you'd be lifting heavy logs and rocks and you'd be running up and down hills. And that's very similar to something called Movnap. Which is a exercise movement that involves training in the wild, just like this, swimming through freezing cold rivers, doing pull-ups from trees. And this is an incredibly functional way to train because when you do a pull-up from a tree, no two pull-ups are ever the same because the tree branch is always gonna be different. It's gonna be thicker at one point and thinner at another. It's gonna be higher at one point and lower another, and you might have to have a really strange angle, and every push up, every pull up you do is different, and that means you're training completely different supportive muscles, the core is highly involved, and your body just has to adapt, and that's incredibly functional. If you think about it, the way we train is almost like 
domesticated. It's like a comfortable gym. Everything is flat and straight. We're using lots of straight lines and that's not really how we would move in the wild. So if you want to be truly functional, then you need to train outdoors or you just need to inject a little bit of the element of the unknown. And I talk about this in my video I uploaded recently on functional training versus isolation training. And being stranded on an island will also make you much more hardy. Like I say, we're domesticated. We love our warm showers. And if it's a little bit cold outside, then we chicken out and go back home. But obviously if you lived in the wild, you'd be forced to just deal with the cold and man up. And you'd be forced to keep on exerting yourself, even when you're exhausted. If you haven't found food, you need to keep on going. So swimming through cold lakes and training outdoors, if you do get the opportunity, is a great way to not only build really functional strength, but also mental grit. And this comes through in Oliver's character a little bit in the show. But if you want to train like this, you don't have to abandon yourself in the wilderness for five years. It's a little bit extreme. So instead what you can do is to just inject a little bit of creativity in your workouts. For instance, instead of just doing a pull-up, tie your towel around your pull-up bar and do the pull-up from the towel. That will make it a little bit more different and it injects an element of the unknown into your training. And Stephen Amell said in the same interview that he likes to keep his workouts unique, keep the body guessing. Likewise, that might mean sitting on a BOSU ball whilst you do your regular exercises, or it might be standing on one leg whilst you do your regular exercises. Just anything that makes the body, the whole body work and makes you more aware of your body in space. And we'll get to more of why that's important in a second. Another really awesome way to train similar skills is to do rock climbing. Rock climbing trains your grip strength, your lat strength, your explosiveness, and your stamina all at the same time. And if you've seen someone do a dyno, which is where they're holding onto a jug and they launch themselves in the air and capture higher up grip on the wall, then that's very similar to the salmon ladder and it builds incredibly dynamic and explosive strength. So if you want to be able to do that, then try rock climbing and specifically bouldering. Bouldering means shorter walls, so you don't need a rope. And there's a crash mat underneath. It's still a challenge to get to the top and you can make it harder for yourself by not using your legs or by taking the harder route. And it's a great way to work out. A lot of gyms have them. So if you want to try it, look up bouldering in your area. And you can also train this way in the gym. You just need to be a bit more functional about the way you approach it. So Stephen Amell does sometimes do traditional resistance work. He does use weights, but he's be more likely to use something like a kettlebell versus a dumbbell. And likewise, he'll make it more difficult and challenging in different ways. For instance, standing on a BOSU ball or sitting on one and just making it once again more functional. Kettlebell training, anything like that. It builds a much more complete strength that you can use when fighting or when running through the woods or doing parkour because you're using your body as one functional unit rather than isolating each individual part. And we also know that Stephen Amell does parkour and he didn't actually know parkour before he started filming Arrow. He learned it for the show, which is just a testament to how cool this guy is because if you watch him doing the stunts in the show, they're pretty incredible. Parkour obviously is a form of CV, you're running, but it's also throwing things at you. You have to climb over walls of different heights, you have to hurdle things, um, monkey vault, etc. And all of this builds once again a very dynamic and explosive strength, something to consider if you want to be more arrow-like. And of course it'd be very useful for running along the rooftops. So the really cool thing about Stephen Amell is that here he's developed a training program that reflects the way that the character would have trained if he were real. So that means that he's able to get not only the look of the character and really embody him, but also the performance to an extent, and also to get into the mindset of the character. And that's something that Hugh Jackman said he did when he was training to be Wolverine. He'd stand in the shower under freezing cold water and just yell to get into that feral, wild mindset. And it's really important to have a training philosophy because when you have a philosophy about the way you train, and you're not just training because you think you're supposed to, or because you want to look hot, or because everyone tells you to, then it gives you more motivation and it allows you to prioritise the things that really matter to you. But obviously Stephen Amell is an actor and Arrow is a superhero and he can't do everything that the character does. And he says himself that there are some things he'd change about his training if he was really Arrow. For instance, he says he wouldn't use such explosive training all the time for the lats because in archery you need lots of strength but also perseverance and stamina to pull the, the, the bow back and then let it go. So he says he would train maybe with a slower cadence using a uh, a cable or um, a lat pull down and he would do it while sitting on a boasting ball once again to really train the abs and the core. But of course the real skill of Arrow is to aim perfectly every time he fires, although you don't see that as much in the show as maybe you could, that's definitely the main power of Arrow. He's a master archer like Hawkeye or Legolas. In order to get better at aiming with a bow and arrow, of course the simple way to do it is to practice archery, go to a class. This is said specific adaptations to impose demands. You want to get better at something, you practice that thing and your body and your brain will adapt. But of course, not all of us have the time or the ability to go to an archery class. You might not have one near you. So of course, anything that will train your hand-eye coordination, your aim, 
you can practice that and you'll get better. So that could mean throwing a tennis ball against a wall. It could be engaging in a different sport. It could mean that you're juggling. Juggling is one of the best things you can do. And actually, really interestingly, virtual reality could be a fantastic way to train your hand-eye coordination and your aim. So I've talked in the past about how virtual reality can be useful for training your brain, but it might also be useful for training physical skills. In one study, it was found that children who had practiced using light gun games, you know, like House of the Dead shooting the gun at the screen, were better at aiming in real life than kids who hadn't. It might seem obvious, but it basically means that that's a transferable skill that can come across. And virtual reality obviously can take us to the next level by fully immersing you in that world. I've been playing a lot of a game called Eleven, and Eleven is basically a table tennis simulator, and it's super realistic, and a lot of people say it's so realistic that it actually improved their real world table tennis skills. So in theory, you can have a real war room in your room by using virtual reality, and as more applications come along, we'll see hopefully more of this kind of thing, but it's incredible what potential virtual reality has for training all kinds of skills. That's something I'm gonna be looking at more in a future video. And also important is to be more mindful as you're practicing your aim. So in one study, basketball players used a technique called the quiet eye. And here they would focus on the rim of the basketball hoop for just a fraction of a second before they threw, but it improved their accuracy by 22%. Basically, the more you focus on something, the more importance you give it to your brain. And this is important for stimulating brain plasticity. So if you are going around practicing catching and throwing or playing a computer game, be more mindful of that fact and it'll improve your skill at a faster rate. And you can also introduce ways to train your aim throughout the day. So that might mean throwing tea bags into a mug or just throwing your clothes and catching them before you put them in the wash basket. And again, just be more conscious as you're doing it and make it into a little training exercise. And it's not just important to be more aware of the object that you're aiming at and the object that you're firing or throwing, but also your own body and space. And this is called proprioception. Anyone who's played bowling will know how important it is to use the correct technique. If their wrist is slightly twisted, then that shot isn't gonna score a strike. So you need to not only focus on the objects, but also on yourself. And you need to develop your proprioception in other ways. And this is something that actually the kind of training that Stephen Amell does would help because if you're training explosively and more dynamically and if you're involving balancing then you are more conscious of your body in space as you're training and particularly good for this are contralateral movements which involve using your limbs out of sync so spider-man crawls are a perfect example and that's said to improve your proprioception and your awareness of your body in space so now we're more aware and we've got better aim but it's also important to improve our vision you need to be able to track the object that you're aiming at with your eyes and you need to be able to focus on it because obviously it's not very good to be great at firing things and perfect aim but not be able to see what you're shooting at. And if you're arrow and you're fighting bad guys, then they're gonna be moving around. They don't just stand still. So tracking things with your eyes is actually a skill you can develop and you can find exercises on computers to let you do this and it just involves following things as they move around the screen with your eyes. And you can also do this in real life by watching things like a fly. And if you try and just follow a fly's movements with your eyes, it's very difficult. And this is a great exercise for improving that particular skill. And another one is the near far drill. This basically means putting an object about 18 inches away from you, and then another one about 10 foot away from you. And the idea is that you focus on the one near you, and then you focus on the one further away, and you switch between them. And this, of course, trains your ability to switch your focus quickly. In a future video, I'm gonna be looking at peripheral vision and how that can help you to develop more of a flow state and more awareness. And of course, this is something that Ari would have really needed on the island because he was constantly being hunted by prey. He had to be aware of everything all around him at all times. And interestingly, playing regular computer games can also improve your visual acuity and your ability to make snap decisions under stress. These are shooting games, but they don't have to be virtual reality or even use a light gun. So if you play a lot of COD or Halo, then according to research, you're better at making out enemies on the horizon and you're better at quickly deciding which one to prioritize when you're aiming. When you really think about it, it's kind of incredible that you can ever successfully hit a target. You have to do amazing maths in a fraction of a second. You have to calculate the speed and the distance of the object that you're aiming at and its trajectory. You have to think about the trajectory of the object you're gonna throw, make sure it hits it when it lands there. You have to think about the weight of the object. You need to think about the wind, the angle, and all of this in a fraction of a second. We actually use a part of our brain to calculate all this that we don't normally have access to for performing regular maths. And there is a guy who can use that part of the brain and he can do it in such a way that he performs sums quicker than a calculator. And of course, I'll be talking about that in future videos and on the website. So those are a bunch of ways you can train a little bit more like Arrow, not only to develop the body of Arrow, but also his explosive strength and speed and potentially his aiming skills as well. And the last thing to consider 
is how you're gonna fit all this into your regular training program. Because most of us don't have time on top of everything else we do to do near far drills or to track objects with our eyes or to train our grip or our lats. And my answer to that is I've talked about in the Batman training video to have a skills workout. This is one day out of your regular workout that it focuses on all the cool skills that you don't have time for in the regular splits. That means things like flexibility or grip strength or aim. So that's when you can do those kinds of things like the near far drill and develop really cool skills that will give you the edge over everyone else in the gym. So this makes sense to me because it fits my training philosophy, which is GPD, which stands for general preparedness training, basically being ready for anything. And if that's the kind of training that appeals to you, then follow some of this advice and you should be right on target. That was cringe. So thanks a ton for watching guys. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please like, please share. I put a ton of effort into this video. This is the first day where I've spent a whole day just working on the Bioneer and I'm gonna be doing this every week. So this was a big video just to get us started, but I'm gonna be doing lots of small ones, a few more big ones, mixing up. There's gonna be loads more content on the website. So please subscribe. It really helps me out. I'm doing everything I can to try and make this channel a success. And it means the world to me that you guys watch this video and comment. It's great. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for lots more cool stuff on the way and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.